Okay, Assalamualaikum and very good day to all of our students. I hope you are healthy and safe. May God protect us against the current pandemic. So today I will be giving you a lecture on cellular adaptation. So usually before I start my lecture, I will be sharing uh, something which is not uh, available in your textbook that I hope will be beneficial for you as you uh, as you graduated uh, later on in your career. So uh, today I'll be sharing you a quote by Dr. Stephen Covey, begin with the end in mind. So this quote uh, enlightened us that uh, we should uh, we should begin we should uh, motivate ourselves with the aim of end product in mind so our end product is what i hope you to become is uh, for you to become a safe a competent empathic and a confident doctor uh, later on, when you graduated, uh, I don't want you to become uh, like some of our previous students. Uh, after they are graduating, uh, whatever they are, whatever that they have learned during their medical school, all forgotten, and they cannot function as a doctor uh, competently. So I hope you will become better, hopefully better than us because I think uh, some of you may be even uh, more intelligent than even I am. So uh, today, uh, these are the contents of my lecture. So I will start with discussing the types of cells based on proliferative potential, uh, introduction to cellular adaptation, common adaptive changes, and after that, we will be having a quiz so uh, so there are three types of cell uh, based on proliferative potential which uh, is described in most textbook the first type is labile cell the labile cell is actively multiplying cells the example of these cells are skin cells hematopoietic cells uh, then the second type is stable cell these cells is usually quiescent, uh, quiescent uh, only multiply when needed. Uh, for example, uh, liver cells or hepatocytes uh, following a trauma or resection, and endocrine glands uh, following hormone stimulation. And the third type is permanent cell. Uh, these cells are the cells that ha has limited uh, capacity to divide uh, example of these cells are neurons cardiac muscles and skeletal muscles so we go on to introduction on cellular adaptation cellular adaptation is defined as reversible changes in number size phenotype metabolic activity or function of cells in response to changes in the environment so the adaptation uh, may be physiological. Physiological is uh, normal changes uh, that occurs in our body. Example of this is uh, responses of cells to normal stimulation by hormones or endogenous chemical mediators. For example, hormone-induced enlargement of breast or uterus in pregnancy. Or demand of mechanical stress, changes in bones and muscles, particularly in uh, bodybuilders. And the adaptation can be pathological. Pathological means it's a part of disease process. Uh, usually, the cells, uh, the adaptation is in response to stress that allows cells to modify the structure and function to protect against injury, but at the expense of normal function. For example, squamous metaplasia of bronchial, bronchial epithelium in uh, lung tissue uh, among the smokers. So these are the common adaptive, adaptive changes. Uh, there are four types. Hypertrophy, 
hyperplasia, atrophy, and metaplasia. So what is hypertrophy? Hypertrophy, literally, we can, uh, we can, uh, we can, uh, how to remember? We can uh, divide into prefix, hyper, suffix, trophy. Hyper means more, trophy means, trophy means growth. So uh, the growth means here is the size, not the number of cells. So a proper definition is hypertrophy can be defined as increase in the size of cells leading to increase in the size of the organ. It may occur together with hyperplasia but usually occurs alone in the permanent cell. The mechanism uh, is usually due to increased amount of structural proteins and organelles. Um, for physiological hypertrophy, uh, for uh, the example of that is a hypertrophy of skeletal muscle with increased workload in bodybuilders or hypertrophy in smooth muscle of uterus during pregnancy. For pathological hypertrophy, uh, the example of this uh, is a hypertrophy of cardiac muscle due to uh, chronic hemodynamic overload, uh, usually the increased pressure in patient with uh, increased pressure in the particularly left ventricle in patient with hypertension. So this uh, is the example of uh, hypertrophy. You can see this uh, is a normal uterus uh, gross appearance. So up here is a uterine fundus, uh, uterus. This is a uterine cervix. This is fallopian tube here. Maybe at the back here is ovary. And at this side, uh, the ovary and fallopian tube is not readily seen. So if you take a sample from the endometrial wall, uh, from the uterine wall, you can see this is the smooth muscle uh, uh, of the uterus. And this is in the normal, uh, normal situation, normal circumstances. In pregnancy, usually the smooth muscle will be hypertrophic, you can see. Uh, the size is increasing here okay okay in permanent cells uh, example is cardiac muscles um, particularly in patient with hypertension usually the uh, the pressure the high pressure uh, within the uh, circulation will give um, increased load to the left ventricle causing uh, left ventricular hypertrophy okay uh, you can see in this picture here uh, this is the slice in uh, autopsy uh, you can see here is the left ventricle this is the right ventricle this is the interventricular septum so the left ventricle here you can see it is thickened and the lumen is narrow okay if the cardiac muscle is hypertrophic the oxygen demand will be increased so if the patient have coronary artery occlusion um, particularly if the occlusion is significant uh, usually more than 75 percent the patient can have a myocardial acute myocardial infarction Usually in autopsy, this is how acute myocardial infarction looks like. You can see here uh, the left ventricle uh, after examined in the TTC solution. You can see it is uh, whitish yellowish color indicate uh, it is uh, infected area. So this uh, example of acute myocardial infarction. Moving on to hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is defined by increase in the number of cells in an organ or tissue leading to their enlargement. Usually hyperplasia occurs uh, due to hormonal or growth factor stimulation. It uh, may occur alone or coexist with hypertrophy. It can be divided into physiological hyperplasia 
example of this is hyperplasia of glandular, glandular elements of breast during puberty and pregnancy and hyperplasia of hepatocyte following hepatic damage or resection to restore the normal function of the liver. Uh, example of pathological hyperplasia is endometrial hyperplasia in unopposed estrogen stimulation. Uh, usually, uh, this uh, prolong of endometrial hyperplasia may predispose uh, the lady to have uh, endometrial carcinoma. And uh, another pathological, another example of pathological hyperplasia is benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Usually, it occurs um, as a result of um, excessive stimulation of androgen, particularly in um, in elderly male. So histologically, um, you can see on the left side here, this is a normal proliferative. Uh, phase of endometrium you can see uh, the endometrial gland here it's pseudo stratified you can see here some mitosis uh, within the glandular lining and uh, you can see the intervening endometrial stroma uh, is present uh, as opposed to endometrial hyperplasia you can see on the right side here there is a uh, prominent proliferation of endometrial gland uh, with reduction of endometrial stroma uh, this is the stroma endometrial stroma the cells uh, the space of uh, is reduced means the glands to stroma ratio is increased and you can see here the number of mitosis also increased here mitosis one then here also mitosis two there are few three uh, in this field also already three mitosis so uh, usually in endometrial hyperplasia the mitosis will be increased okay moving on to atrophy uh, atrophy uh, literally if you divide into prefix and suffix a uh, means without trophy means growth so uh, in a proper definition, it is a decrease in cell size causing reduction in the size of tissue or organ. The mechanism of atrophy are decrease in protein synthesis, increase in protein degradation in cells, and autophagy. Atrophy can be physiologic. Uh, usually, uh, it happens in, in the endometrium and breast after menopause due to loss of hormonal stimulation and atrophy can also be pathologic. Uh, so, example of pathologic hypertrophy. The first one is atrophy of disuse. Uh, example of this is skeletal muscle atrophy following immobilization in fractured bone uh, this skeletal muscle that are atrophic usually uh, is uh, skeletal, skeletal muscle that are attached to the fractured bone so uh, there is no movement so there will be atrophy atrophy can also be caused by denervation uh, loss of uh, nerve supply example of this is skeletal muscle atrophy with lower motor neuron denervation atrophy also can be due to reduction in nutrient supply example in patient in marasmus uh, and atrophy also can occur in patient with atherosclerosis whereby uh, there will be a cerebral atrophy uh, as a result of loss of neurons in layer 3 5 and 6 Atrophy can also uh, be due to occlusion in secretory ducts of the pancreas. Example, in cystic fibrosis, there is a thick ductal secretion uh, causing the dilatation of duct, uh, atrophy of exocrine gland, and also uh, leads to uh, compression atrophy. Also can be due to compression atrophy. 
atrophy uh, can also occur in urethral obstruction where there is, there is compression atrophy at the cortex and medulla causing hydronephrosis so example of atrophy uh, is also is brain atrophy uh, this is a normal brain uh, in an autopsy so this is a brain with the meninges this is the brain without the meninges uh, so the meninges is stripped out so this the folded folded area is the gyri the indented area is the sulci so in brain atrophy usually the gyri here the folded area is narrowed here narrowed and the sulci the indented area will be widened so this is the character these are the characteristic of brain atrophy that can be seen uh, during autopsy examination so moving on to metaplasia metaplasia can be defined as replacement of one differentiated cell type with another differentiated cell type usually in response to chronic irritation that makes cell better able to withstand the stress so metaplasia, uh, the mechanism can be uh, can be due to reprogramming of the stem cell existing in normal tissue or in undifferentiated mesenchymal cell present in connective tissue. So it can be divided into epithelial metaplasia and mesenchymal metaplasia. Uh, common example of epithelial metaplasia is squamous metaplasia. It occurs in the lung of cigarette smoker where the normal ciliated columnar epithelial lining or also known as respiratory type epithelium replaced with stratified squamous epithelium uh, because the stratified squamous epithelium uh, can withstand the, um, the, the insult from the nicotine uh, from the nicotine of the smoke in cigarette smoker so uh, in short term it protects against um, against malignancy uh, it also metaplasia squamous metaplasia also occurs in patient with stone in excretory duct of salivary gland or pancreas where the normal columnar lining epithelium is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium epithelial metaplasia also uh, can be columnar metaplasia Example, uh, in Barrett esophagus, uh, the patient, uh, usually a chronic gastroesophageal reflux disease patient, the squamous epithelium uh, of the esophagus is replaced with intestinal-like columnar cells. Uh, so if this uh, present, so we call it as Barrett esophagus. For mesenchymal metaplasia, it occurs uh, due to formation of mesenchymal element, example cartilage bone or adipose tissue in tissue that does do not contain them. Example, bone formation in muscle uh, following intramuscular hemorrhage. Uh, the disease is called myositis ossificans. Okay, com uh, complication of metaplasia. This is important. Uh, the uh, the important uh, complication the first one is dysplasia dysplasia uh, literally the suffix dis means abnormal plasia means proliferation so it's abnormal proliferation or it is also can be defined as uh, abnormal proliferation uh, characterized by abnormal uh, architectural and cellular Atypia uh, usually can be divided into low grade and high grade dysplasia. Low grade dysplasia, uh, for example, in low grade uh, squamous intraepithelial lesion, low seal of uh, cervix, uh, usually it can be reversible. Usually it is reversible. But high grade dysplasia, uh, usually uh, it is irreversible and it has high 
chances of malignant transformation or cancerous transformation. So metaplasia is actually not good even though it protects in a short term to withstand the stress but it also can lead to dysplasia and ultimately malignant transformation. Okay, uh, these are examples of uh, epithelial metaplasia. On the left hand side, you can see this is the ciliated columnar epithelium, uh, also known as respiratory type epithelium. Adjacent to it is squamous metaplasia, which is uh, this is the stratified squamous epithelium. Why uh, there is squamous metaplasia? Because in uh, in lung tissue of a smoker, usually uh, squamous uh, epithelium can withstand the free radicals better uh, than the uh, normal respiratory type epithelium. So that that is the adaptive response in uh, lung tissue of a smoker. So on the right hand side, you can see this is the squamous columnar epithelium. Squamous columnar epithelium usually uh, usually can be seen at uh, gastroesophageal junction and also uh, transformation zone of the cervix. So in this tissue, this is the gastroesophageal junction. You can see this is stratified squamous epithelium. This is the columnar epithelium. Uh, down here you can see this is a glandular structure with goblet cell. So this we can call it as intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal metaplasia in gastroesophageal junction is, uh, is occurred in uh, Barrett esophagus. So Barrett esophagus if left untreated it can uh, lead to uh, malignant transformation. So that concludes my lecture today. Uh, these are my references. And with that, I thank you. Hopefully you didn't fall asleep. So let's continue with the quiz. Thank you so much.